Good evening, YouTuber subscribers and friends and the like. It's Grant coming at you from Holiday Inn Express South side of Elkhart, Indiana. Uh, I just want to basically go over. I'm doing an inventory today of my stuff. I like to pull all my stuff out every now and then, let my clothes breathe a little so they don't smell as much, and then take account of everything in case I lost something. I can end up replacing it. But as I was doing inventory, I decided I should show you everything that I carry along with me and, and make a video about it. In case you're looking into getting to know RV transport and give you ideas of what you should maybe decide to pack along with you. So I'll we'll start out with electric shaver. It's this way and that way, good and bad, because if you that stupid button stays on and you don't hear it vibrating in your pack back by the time you go use it, it's dead. So that kind of sucks about it, but I do like electric shavers better than manual. I have a manual shaver. Razor right there is back up in case. This is my food from today. I got DoorDash. DoorDash is another thing worth getting. You usually pay somewhere between three and ten bucks worth of delivery fee and tips and all that. But it's convenient because you don't have to go get the food yourself. And when you're on foot between trips, it's nice to have that. I got the regular door deodorant instead of the spray can deodorant. I prefer the spray can, but TSA won't let you take the spray can on board, which sucks. I might have to try to find something that's a small spray can or something that maybe they'll let you. My glass is cleaner. I have three prescription glasses. One is full to gray, and it changes the color of the lens out in the sun, but they you, if you, you can't drive with that because behind the windshield it won't change. Then I have one that's a regular pair that doesn't have any kind of shade, and then I have one that's whole time all the time sunglasses prescription and I wrote tape between those three and they're all the same prescription so I don't screw my eyes up I got them all at the same time and that's what I use when I'm driving the rest of the time I don't ever use glasses so I just got some cheap all cover glasses for the one you walking out and about trying to catch a bus and everything else so during the daytime when you're out on foot I have something that covers my eyes full all the way around instead of just just the lens part I bought a work binder to keep all my company crap in and I have my tape in it and I have a pink ugly stapler because the gun because that was the only thing that staples had at the time when I pulled in their office max or whatever the hell I went to I have a pair of scissors in there to use to cut up and trim up the receipts I have my passport as you can see I have backup credit cards and stuff like that I have my plates all bolted together and then this is a dog collar this is a trick that one of the other RV transporters at the Pinnacle showed me. Grab a dog dog collar for about 10 bucks there at Walmart. Then you zip tie either end. And then all you got to do is snap this on and off of the back ladder or wherever you can snap it on on the back of your rig. For the Pinnacle trucks that are step vans and boxes and stuff like that. It's just faster and easier. Then you, all you got to do is hide the snap off part toward the back so that people don't know it actually comes off that easy. Then you can snap it on and off. And you don't have to keep messing with the zip ties. I also have a bag of zip ties in there. That I can use zip tie stuff down if I need to. I have the phone carrying case from Thule. It's T-H-U-L-E. It's the company that makes it. And it's a pretty durable pad uh, shuttle carrier case that they call it. I highly recommend it if you get a shuttle pack for yourself if you're going to carry cords and stuff and keeps all your cords for your phones organized and then it's got that padding that you can put phones or anything sensitive in there and it won't get smashed up in your bag if you have to. That's why I bought it. Bought that one. It was pretty cheap. I think it was like 10 or 20 bucks or something for a battery pack that's actually charged by the sun so that any time I'm out and about I don't have to always look for outlets. That is handy to have and then plus it's a backup flashlight in case one or both my phones are dead or close to dead and I don't want to use it at night. Or I had to go out camping or anything. The, then I have a pair of cheap Bluetooth head earphones. I don't really like them, but they were like 3 bucks on Wish.com. Wish is a nice place to go shopping at if you have a mailing address that it'll work with because it's kind of picky with mailing addresses. But then once you get the mailing address that it'll work with, you can get some really cheap stuff. It's almost cheaper than Amazon if you go on Wish. And then this is my backup pad that I see is charged and I should char start charging their phones. This is normally a woman's extra wallet that my mom had that I kept that I kept all my personal stuff in there. It's got a birth certificate, um, my DOT physical, and a bunch of other backup cards that I used at this time or that time. Some old food stamps cards. 
and my old company IDs are in there and so on since it was stuff that I'm not gonna show on YouTube but it's nice to have a place to wrap that all that up when I don't need to use it but it's just an important papers collection place pretty much the binder is starting to be that and I'm thinking maybe later on this week I'm considering taking everything out of that and putting it in the binder pocket but there's only one pocket to do that with on this binder so I'm kind of iffy on whether I'm gonna do it or not my paperwork for the bills of ladings and all that is in the back of that binder there and then the company stuff that I have to have my driver contract with my company saying I'm allowed to be in the vehicle my DOT number for each company and my insurance for each company and the registration for each company is all lined up right there in case I ever get pulled over. I'm going to eventually buy different colored folders for different companies so I can just take whatever folder out that I'm, that I'm using and put it underneath the display for the front uh, license plate that I put in the windshield. And then that way if I ever get pulled over I just have the one company and the one license plate ready to go. DOT officers don't need to know that I'm running for more than one company as far as that's concerned. <laughs> If I ever got pulled over for anything. Uh, my stocking cap and some baseball caps. That one is kind of an ugly, homeless looking stocking cap. But my mom gave it to me. And by God, that's like the warmest stocking cap I've ever worn in my life. I cannot believe how warm that actually, how much heat that saves from your body. And keeps in the hat. It's, it's warmer than the brand named North Face hat, fat that I, had that I have. But I keep both. Sometimes when I need just for looks, I wear that one. And if I was camping outside, if I had to camp outside and not spend the money on a hotel or something, I would be wearing that one at night. Uh, these are neck gaiters that you can use as masks and about anywhere you go. Sometimes you have to have a regular mask. That's just a pair of, kind of I think it's woman's uh, gloves, finger gloves or whatever. But I just keep them for the same reason I keep that hat in case I ever need gloves, regular gloves. Uh, that's my money belt. Don't have any money in it right now, but it's, as you can see, it's got a zipper. You can fold up money and put it in there. If you if you got a hundred, you could probably carry like a thousand bucks worth of cash on you. I wouldn't suggest that, but I'm just saying you could. If you had twenties, you could pay or carry about two hundred worth in there in space around on your belt. You can see the zipper there. These are a damn good pair of army uh, PTI or PT physical training shorts. They work as my swimming trunks because they uh dry off. I don't know what material they're made out of, but they dry off, right off pretty dang quickly. So they make for a nice pair of swimming trunks for something that you have to get wet all the time. I might use the hot tub here at the hotel and go do that. That's what I have it for. When I get done with this video, I might do that. This is my nameless fleet ja uh, fleece jacket that I got from REI a while back. I'm going to keep this one as kind of more of a backup, and then I'm going to use it on the L train in Chicago and places where you don't want to advertise that you have money. You know, it'll be decent enough looking, but not being name brand stuff that advertises that I have money. Because there are places like the L train in Chicago, you really don't want to advertise that. You can get robbed. It's pretty rough. This is my Stealth Angel Survival uh, sleeping bag. I think it costs like 150 bucks. I can't remember, but you can press it all the way down to that. And it's a size comparison. You see my hand compared to, you know, and it can get smaller than that too. I just didn't put compress it all the way. I always carry a pair of flip-flops because they come in handy both for when you're driving and getting in and out of the van all the time to fuel up and everything. It's just easier to have flip-flops. And then when you go to use those swimming trunks in the hot tub, stuff like that, it's nice to have flip-flops instead of shoes. They, they work as my second set of full shoes, so I only have one actual pair of shoes, which I need to replace those Skechers. They're getting pretty old. And I would, could stand to have some new ones with some nice gel insoles in them. But anyway, I just have these two for footwear. The idea being that if I were to lose my shoes somewhere or something or something broke, I'd at least have something I could wear. But then these are lightweight that I can pack in a backpack that aren't not the full weight of a regular shoe. And that's why I keep those two. Now on this side, I bought a brand new 80 Bauer bag the other day that's an actual, it's a 38 liter. And... It has a name, name brand on it, as you can see, but not very visible. And it's got the padding that I need to be able to be, make that bag versatile enough to be able to check it under a bus or check it into a plane and not have to worry about it as much as my nice stowaway bags. I have this nice set here, but for 20 bucks, they're a, a bag. They're a decent value. 
but I worry about the material tearing if I were to go check it. And this way I can stuff everything in that and I don't have to worry as much. This bag also is very versatile and multi-purpose because you can actually put those uh, straps, tuck them back into here and zip the thing shut and there's an arm strap in there that you can make this into a duffel. So it can be a backpack, a duffel, or technically a suitcase with handles on each side of the bag. You know, you gotta think of these things as you're traveling. Makes life a little easier. I gotta clean it up a little because it was out and about. The black kind of shows up the dirt. But that's easy enough, easy enough to wipe it off. But I decided to buy that the other day because they, uh, Eddie Bauer had a sale during Memorial Day. And I walked out with about $700 worth of stuff. And it, I only paid about $300 worth of Eddie Bauer. So, I think I got a pretty good deal on it. But anyway... This is the backpack that's a stowaway, folds up into its own pocket, as you can see. That's the duffel that's a stowaway, and that's a day pack that's a stowaway. Then I have the old day pack there. And for right now, I'm just going to put everything in there, I think, and not use these bags for the moment. But these are backup bags in case, like, I need to grab food from someplace. I would have a big enough bag to stuff it in to have to pack it to the hotel or wherever. And then when I don't need it, it can fold away in there. Or if I bought more clothes from any bower that don't all fit or something at least for the trip back home or whatever i could have extra bags to do it with so it never hurts to have extra bags one of them i might use for the toiletry bag and put all that stuff that's on the counter over there in it or back in it i haven't decided yet the only downside to this bag and it's both a down and an upside is it's a travel bag so it's designed to not have any exterior pockets that are on the outside of the bag that way people can't come up and steal your stuff it does have one exterior pocket, but it's on the inside toward your back, which is nice for like, you know, I don't know, paperwork or something that you would have to have readily access, but, you know, easier than in, in and out of the, this deal. Because if you have the arm straps across there, you have to unhook the arm strap and unzip it to get into there, which is a little bit annoying. The idea is to make it harder for pickpockets to try to get to you in your stuff. So they advertise that you could put your passport in there or whatever. I wouldn't do it, but I'm just saying. That's why they have it. I bought it for all the room, though. And for that fact, so that I didn't have any exterior pockets. So that when I am on the L train or questionable type places, people can't still easily get into my bag and steal stuff. Of course, in this bag, it's probably going to be mostly just clothes anyway. But just, you know, on the offhand chance, I don't want to get in the bad habit of putting stuff into pockets on the exterior bags. And then in all, all in all, it looks better if you have less pockets on the outside, I, I tend to think. But mostly I bought it for, for the padding. There's lots of padding all the way around, and I think it will stand being checked at an airplane or under a bus or something. I have three pairs of underwear. One is in there in the bathroom getting dried because they washed it. And this is a pair of, of shorts that used to be shorts or pants, but they were my brother's pants that passed along down to me. But he's taller than me, so I couldn't use the leg part of it. But eventually, if I can find a pair of pants that have zip-up pockets, I'm going to replace my pair of pants that I have in there drying and this pair of shorts with just the one pair that has pants or shorts to make things lighter, and then I can rotate that stuff out. Because I have this pair of jogging pants that I also have. They don't have pockets, but they work as an extra inside layer long john type of layer if you happen to be stuck out in the winter time or something i would have something that i could put on underneath as a secondary layer but then they also work as themselves and then they are light enough that i don't mind packing them around and that's how i get around having to have lots of layers of pants i have one pair of pants i have one pair of shorts i have those swimming trunks that you could technically use as shorts but they're, they have a built-in pair of underwear in them and then I have the, the pants that I'm wearing. And that's all the pants that I have. Then I have two pairs of socks there. Then I have, this is the outer shell for Eddie Bauer. I don't want to take it out to show you because I've shown it in other videos. But anyway, I pulled it into its own pocket. It doesn't, it's not really designed to do that, but it holds itself close enough, as you can see. This is the new puff down jacket. You can kind of see it. A puffy air material that I'm going to use within the, sh the shell. This will be your outer layer. This will be your next inner layer, which is the puff down jacket. And then I have an Eddie Bauer fleece that I bought that'll have Eddie Bauer in the pocket and it has zip up pockets on it. This fleece doesn't have zip up pockets, just has hand warmers. But this, but I'm saying the Eddie Bauer fleece would be the next layer. 
And then I have this backup fleece that's nameless, doesn't have any name on it. On purpose, like I say, so I can go on the L train and subways and stuff like that. Questionable places that you would not want to show that you have, have any kind of money on you because you could get robbed. And scary things can happen on some of those places. They look pretty scary. So, but I do have name brand stuff for Eddie Bauer so that when I check into hotels, I just outright look better. When I'm wearing that stuff right there, they skip having to do the incidentals and hold your money hostage you know anywhere from 30 to 100 bucks worth of incidentals they hold hostage for a day or two to clear then what it is is essentially is a security deposit or damage deposit in case you stole their tv or anything they would have some kind of money to replace it with or incentive for you not to steal their stuff if they know they you know that you can get charged for it well, wearing that Eddie Bauer just the other day at Choice, for instance, I was able to check in just for just paying cash at Choice. It was like $84 or something to stay there. I paid it in cash and didn't, they didn't even need another card on file or anything for me because I was wearing that Eddie. And it between that and being the top tier at Choice, you know, they let you get by, you know, because they expect... Or they believe that you're a frequent traveler which i have been, been, become a frequent traveler and so they kind of let you get away with not having to do stuff and then wearing an 80 bauer stuff name break any kind of name brand stuff you have columbia north face patagonia any of that kind of stuff where people pay extra for those brands they know the people who pay extra for the brands obviously have the extra money to pay for those brands and so it says that you're not any some homeless bum out on the street that they would have to worry about you damaging their stuff or whatever. It's a general idea. But that is the inventory of what I carry with me. It'll I'm hoping that it'll all fit in that bag when I put it back up. And here in a couple hours, I'm gonna put it back up. I'm just letting it all breathe right now so I can get rid of any funky smells or anything. I've wa hand washed a lot of this stuff, but I'd need to go back through the laundry, the actual laundry machine and wash it, I think. Eventually, but that's the extras of what I got, and then I'll show you the bathroom. I missed the one sock, so one sock didn't get washed, but it didn't smell that bad anyway. But I've been on the bus a couple days with this stuff, so I was hand washing it all to wash the bus smell off. But anyway, basically there's my back pair of pants, another underwear, socks, and then my black shirt I was wearing the other day, or blue shirt, I should say. And it's all drying because I washed it in the bathtub. Cheap, easy way to do it. So, as soon as that stuff dries in a couple hours... I'm going to pack everything back up and see if it fits in that bag. And then I'll probably end this video with another segment showing you that I fit everything in that bag, which I'm hoping it will do. I'm not all too sure that uh, binder, work binder right there, it's pretty fat by itself. And I don't think it'll fit in there once I get all the clothes in there, but I'll have to see. I'm hoping it does. That'd be nice. Um, I, at the post office, I also have a Eddie Bauer roller, four-wheeler roller luggage spinner they call them or whatever where it's got four wheels and spins in any direction i bought one of them the other day because it was on sale you know 200 hundred dollar eddie bauer roller luggage that i bought for like a 80 or 100 bucks it was a pretty good deal on it i took advantage of during the uh, memorial day sale that eddie had and i watched the eddie, eddie bauer market on the they're shopping on their website year round and so i know for a fact you know they weren't just doing that as a marketing scheme and whatnot. That stuff is actually half half the cost this last weekend. So I took advantage of it. Other thing I could point out is I bought two phones holding cases like that. So I basically have two phone wallets now. And the blue one, Calm Data card, is for Synergy. The gray one is for Pinnacle. Tomorrow I'm going to pick up another blue one or red one or something for... Uh, Quality. I'm taking the first run for quality. And I put it in the other wallet. Then I have the headphones that only work with my newer phone because they have that Type-C connection on them, which is kind of annoying. Then I pick up these tea packets from, from hotels every now and then because if you ever end up broke, like you're in between times when you're getting paid and stuff like that, which I've had happen to me a couple times, it's nice to at least be able to flavor water that you drink from the tap or whatever. And it's got caffeine in those actual tea packets, which is also nice add-on for cheap so i make sure to grab those every now and then 
when I see them in the hotel. I got a Qdoba's burrito for dinner and, and uh, chocolate brownies and a dinner deal I saw from DoorDash today. Those are my keys to the mailbox that I told you about in the description below. To mailbox 437 in Goshen. Uh, and it's 46526 is the zip code. So if you wanted to send me anything. My name is Grant Dryden. Uh, my last name is spelled D-R-Y-D-E-N. If anybody happened to want to spend, send anything to me, I actually have a mailing address now. I also have merchandise available through uh, teespring.com. You'll see on uh, my description below that that merchandise is available. And here in about a week, I'm going to send out for a hoodie for it. So I'll be carrying one of my own hoodies along with me on this rest of this stuff as soon as I make sure everything fits. Then I'm going to get that four-wheel spinner, like I said, from ID Bauer on the mail. It shows up. And my other uh, fleece hoodie from ID Bauer when it shows up. I had to order those both on online because the store didn't have it. The store only had a pullover fleece that didn't have pockets. And I, I want to get everything that I have to have zippered pockets. That way, if push came to shove... And I had to, some reason or another, get rid of my bags or somebody stole stuff or whatever. They have a way to pack stuff on zippered pockets on me. And then I'm thinking about in the future maybe doing a little more Frontier Airlines because they're cheap. But the thing about Frontier is they pretty much charge you in the back end by doing uh, check bag charges and carry-on bag charges. But if I took short trips like I'm planning to do this week... You know, 500 mile a day trips. It'd be much easier and cheaper to fly back faster on Frontier if I'm not carrying many bags. The idea being is I might buy a $45 a month storage shed. Stuff all my clothes and bags and that when I know I'm taking a short run. Take the short run for 500 miles for one day. For quality tomorrow I'm doing a 500 mile run up to Twin Cities. Once a little more than that, it's like 530 and then Thursday, after I get back, I'm going to be doing another 499 mile short run for Pinnacle down to Missouri. And both those times I could fly back for way cheaper on Frontier if I got rid of the bags. However, I haven't gotten the storage yet, so I might get the storage on Thursday because they offered a free month of storage and then 45 bucks for the second month. But I'm looking into whether or not that is by contract they have to sign you know for six months worth of contract or a year or whatever or if it's month by month pay if it's month by month pay i'll get one if it's a six month deal i'm not i'm probably not gonna get one because i don't need it in storage for more than a, probably a couple months just to store this extra winter stuff it's lightweight yeah but like i say if i could do these short and whenever i do these short trips i don't need to take all that with me so i could literally layer up in a basic layer and have a coat with me and whatnot, on and then fly back on frontier for way cheaper frontier sometimes even has like 50 dollars tickets for halfway across the country from denver to chicago for like 50 or 40 bucks you know way cheaper and faster to get back but the problem is if you have a bag or a couple bags they charge you 30 or 45 bucks each bag i've seen at times where your bag almost costs more than a ticket so i'm just saying you know in terms of trying to be cheaper this one time I looked at Delta versus, I think it was Delta versus Frontier. Delta had it for $222 and gave you a free bag, one check and one carry on free, I think, or something. And Frontier had it for 173 bucks and then charged the bags. By the time you get done paying the bags and whatever seating arrangement that you want, because I usually try to buy the seating arrangement that has more leg room. By the time you do all that, it's going to cost way more than the Delta would have cost, and Delta has more leg room provided also. So, you know, sometimes it's just worth it not to have a bag. But I like having stuff, though, too, so I might end up paying 45 bucks for two months, which is not bad, you know, 23 bucks a month, roughly, to be able to store that stuff so I don't have to pack it with me. And then I can just go there and change clothes and go again on the shorter trips. And then I'm also looking into taking some longer trips uh, into Canada and into Alaska just so I'm driving newer roads, so I'm getting that set up. But I was supposed to do Indiana Transport right now, today, but they messed up and didn't put me on their orientation. And I have Classic Transport next Monday and Tuesday, so that's why I'm taking two short trips this week. Because I pretty much can't do nothing 
on that following Monday because I have to be back in Elkhart on Monday for Classic, and I'm hoping Classic doesn't screw theirs up. But basically, I've just decided I'm going to stick, I think, with just those four companies, Classic, Quality, Synergy, and Pinnacle for now. And I might add Indiana or Horizon in a month, but I want to take a few longer trips, go out to Alaska for that 3,000-mile trip because that pay, that is 3,086 miles from Synergy to in Goshen to Anchorage, Alaska, and it pays just under that. It's like 3,000 bucks, and then they take a little bit of escrow out of that too, but the fuel mileage I would get and the escrow and everything will be a thousand, but then I should be able to walk home with, or not walk home literally, but go home with two grand worth of profit, depending on, you know, the plane trip back and everything, probably end up with like 1500 for that six day trip, which is not bad, so I'm thinking about doing that, or going into Canada, which is about half the distance, you know, 1500, 2000 miles, stuff like that, because it just works out better. In the long run, if I stay, stay in a unit for three or four days, and then only have to get a hotel for a day or two. And that way I can avoid having to go camp out on the street. Or, you know, because my choices are that, or, you know, spend money on hotels. I'm also looking into Red Roof Inn, depending on if they got a discount for Synergy and stuff. I might start using it while I'm here in Elkhart, just because it's cheaper and it's located conveniently right next to where uh, the Greyhound bus drops off in Elkhart. That way, at the end of the day, I can just go right across the street and go to it. They have a rewards program. It's not the greatest. But they do have one that they add up. The more stays you stay, you get to stay free one every now and then or something. So, I'm thinking about doing that at least for when I'm locally here in Elkhart. For the trips back to kind of save a little more money. But I like this job. And there's enough variety and flexibility and I can do whatever I want with Whatever I want, as long as I can afford it. I'm just giving you one last look at all the stuff I pack, which looks like a lot of stuff, but when you get it all in the bags, it's pretty easy. I think what I'm gonna might do is put all of that into one bag. Everything that's not clothes in one bag. And that probably that backpack, that's toy backpack. And then everything that's closed, that's closed into that black bag as soon as my stuff in the in the bathroom gets dry. And then try and stuff it all in the backpack, I mean in the black bag, including that other backpack that's just a way backpack. Stuff it there on top and hope it all fits in there. And then it'd be easier if I have to go get anything and just go right out the top of that bag and get the backpack out and get what you need. So, there's pluses and minuses to buying that bag that I bought. It was like 200 bucks. But like I said, I got it on sale for like 80 or 100 bucks. The plus being that when you're traveling, people can't jack stuff from you. Pickpockets can't get to it because they don't have outdoor, outside pockets. But then at the same time, a little bit annoying because you got to get in to it to get to something like that you need for five seconds, like glasses or your passport or whatever. So, but I figure I bought the coats that have zip-up pockets and stuff like that so I could put a, the stuff that I would need for that day in my coat if I'm wearing a coat or on the zippered pocket side of my pants. And then not have to get into the bag. The bag life is getting to me a little bit, I will say. And then I'm starting to think I have a bag addiction too. Just based off of that. <laughs> not that I don't even need all the bags, but they come in handy every now and then when you gotta pack food or you gotta go do laundry. You can put laundry in one bag. Or a day pack and go around a town exploring some place or something if you're somewhere. You don't want to pack all your stuff with you, but you want to pack your sensitive stuff with you, like your passport and your cards and your glasses and stuff like that so people don't steal them like the, like your housekeeping and whatnot you don't want to leave them at the hotel you can take the day pack put everything that you need in the day pack and go so it's nice to have an option versus having no option i just thought i would show you everything that i have and what i'm doing for those of you who are rv transporting so that you get an idea of what all you might want to pack along with you and some people will be even less than me some people will be more than me there's some people out there that are more than me with the rollover, with the roll bag, and that bag on top of it, and everything. I kind of tend to think once I get my roller spinner, I ought to be able to put all my clothes in it, and then I'm going to use that black bag on top like that. But it's pretty much only going to have the work binder in it, because the work binder is what I go to all the time. Because I need this every other day, it seems, it seems like, between paying off your paperwork and getting the decals and the plates out, 
I end up needing that all the time. So I'm basically going to put stuff that I need all the time in that black bag. It'll be nice and padded, but it won't be full of nothing. It'll just look big. And then all my clothes and literally everything else I can into that four-wheel spinner that I'll show you. Oh, no, it's one of these upcoming videos after I pick it up from the post office. Anyhow, I just thought I would talk to myself on the camera and talk to you and show you what it's like to be an RV expedite. I mean, RV transporter and living this bag life because you're literally living on the foot foot half the time and then you're living in an RV half the time and in the hotels the other half the time. And a lot of lately I've been just sleeping on the bus back because it's just cheaper all around to do that instead of paying, let's say, 100 to 200 for an airplane ticket that you have to then pay for the l train let's say in chicago or subway or whatever to get make connection from the airport down to the bus because every time you come in to elkhart unless i fly in the other way from minneapolis or something you pretty much end up having to take the bus or a train or something from the airport they don't have an airport that's close enough except for south bend and south bend is usually a hundred or a couple hundred more in money to fly into south bend i've not seen a deal from south bend yet i've seen some deals from midway and o'hare but by the time you count in all those, you know, you can get back sooner, a lot sooner, by taking a plane for the majority of it. But then you just have to deal with paying for a hotel another night. Unless you get right back in an RV and go again. But I'm not all gung-ho enough to get back in an RV and go again. Because what's, you know, I don't have to feel miserable and tired all the time. You know, I can afford not to. Back in my young and dumb 20s, I probably would have done that. Would have flown in. Oh, yeah, give me that RV. Oh, yeah, give me that RV. Yeah. And have been just kind of too gung-ho to do it. But nowadays, I'm smarter. Smart enough to notice that, you know, I should enjoy my life more than just not, not everything in this world is worth the money. This is great, though. I have a hotel room like this, and then I'm going to go down front here and let him let me into the hot tub. They say their hot tub works, but they have to let everybody in so that they can maintain how many people are in it at a time. Hopefully nobody's in it so I can relax in the hot tub. And then if not, I'll just use the ba bath in here and make a hot bath. And the deal won't have, a, won't have jets, but it'll be worth it to relax in it. Um, my next video coming up here in probably a couple hours when I get it out, it's going to be going over the six trips that I've taken thus far. I think it's like six, maybe seven trips and kind of the cost of it all. I might write that down in my notebook. And then do another video later tonight. Maybe post it tomorrow or, or later tonight. Like and subscribe. Leave comments. And we'll catch you on the flip. Peace.